While we try to be as helpful as possible, this podcast should not be considered as professional or financial advice. It contains general information only, and you should seek out professional advice for your own personal circumstances before making any financial decisions. I'm Julia. And I'm Nick. And this is The Enthusiast Lab. I did like Stuart Sandover. That was killer. Yeah. Well, welcome back to another episode of The Enthusiast Lab. This week, we got to hand over Stuart's home to him, which was awesome. We um, By now, you guys would have seen all the reels that we've done about him. Um, no. Yeah. If how, you guys- how could you not with a garage that size? Stuart built our indul- indulgence home, which is a four by two with a theatre, with a six car garage as, as well as the hoist section as well. So fucking balls to the wall. It was mm. killer. Sitting on a 600 square meter block um, in an ideal area that he wanted. So, yeah, to see it all come together so fucking quickly as well. His build time from slab to keys was just over was it nine, nine, nine and a half months. Yeah, I think the whole just was over. 13 months, but that was from the beginning yes. of administration that was, process. Yeah, that was from first catching up and paying a deposit to picking up the keys from us which was yeah. today, um, yeah, 13 months, so fucking wild. Yeah, if you guys don't know um, how podcasting works, you, we kind of record multiple episodes uh, in a week and we record well in advance. So uh, by the time this comes out, I think Stuart would have had his kids yeah. for like a month and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out, Stuart. <laughs> Congrats again, mate, fucking, and really excited to see the whole home turn into a home. So once we hand over the keys, it's a house, you know, and once you've moved all your furniture in and really set it up the way that you like to live and with your lifestyle, that's when it becomes a home and that's what we love to see. Mm, exactly. Um, so today's episode, I think will be a nice sh- shorter one yeah. compared to last week's. I think yeah, it'll fuck, be that shorter. Was, um, but it was, it was needed. It that was needed. Was I don't really think needed. we could have made that any shorter. Nah. No. Um, so today's topic is uh, what is an info session and it's kind of covering what we do at Mr. Enthusiast. If yes. you were to book in an info session with Nick, um, this might be after you guys have had a phone call or haven't had a phone call. You just even just if you reached out on Insta or, or on Facebook or whatever, just flicked me a text just going, hey, want to catch up? Mm. Like, what the fuck's this all about? Even if we haven't spoken to you, some clients yeah. just automatically book an appointment and yeah. we meet them face to face for the first time. Yeah. That moment they're like, yeah, we're yeah. like, we don't even know who you are. But um, you know what? Kill us. Cause, so what this is going to be is just to give a bit of an idea for people going, You'll hear a lot about what our info session is and, you know, what is it? What does it entail? So this is a bit of a breakdown. We're not going to release everything. Mm, because there's obviously other people listening that... Just a couple. Just a few. <laughs> just a couple. But what well, this is just for you guys to have a bit of an idea going, okay, cool, like, am I really wasting my time if I come in for an info session or mm. what the fuck is this all about? And that's what today's about. Yeah, exactly. So uh, first thing, first and foremost, it is obligation-free and... Yes free of charge. 100%. You're not paying for my time to catch up for us to have a bit of a yarn. This is, you can come have a catch, catch up with me, which has happened many times, and then it might not be the right fit, might not be the right thing, and then you can go elsewhere. That's not a problem. You're not obligated if you catch up with me, you have to come to me. We might not vibe, something might not be right, or you just might not be in the right area, and then you find someone else. That's, it's it's all good. There's no qualms about it. It's what we want to do is get this info out there because we didn't have this with our own build. Mm-hmm. So the biggest thing with our first catch up, our first appointment uh, info session is let's get everything out there. If it works, cool. If it is, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Mm-hmm. If not, it is what it is. And it's really there to assess your situation and give you as much information up front so then you can start making educated moves and educated decisions. 100%. It's... This, it's not a you catch up and then here, please sign. It's mm-hmm. a, hey, let's catch up. Let's figure out what your fucking circumstances are. Let's work out the budgets. Let's work out your expectations, everything. Let's create a plan. As, you know, we might be able to go for it straight away or we might be three, six, 12 months away. And that's okay. It's about getting that information unfiltered, raw and honest 
to know exactly where you are. It may not be what you want to hear, but it's what you need to hear. And I'm here to make sure that we deliver that. And I don't really give a fuck if it hurts your opinions or not, because someone has to tell you. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather it come from me after we've assessed everything with the professionals and going, this is what you need to do, rather than family members or whatever telling you what you sh what you should be doing. Yeah, exactly. And this really is just you taking the first step. It yeah. is the most important step. It is the decision of, I want to own my own home, is building right for me. And if yeah. it's not, all good. That's, that's no qualms. Let's... Yeah, let's chat. So the first thing that we ask you to bring, if Nick has had the opportunity to chat to you before you book in, is you need to have two recent payslips. Yeah, you know, so if you're FIFO, and a lot of you guys are, if you're doing your two-in-one rosters, normally I need three mm -hmm. most recent payslips to get the average, because you normally get paid two big, one small. Anyone, you know, if you're on the normal eight and six or just working Metro Perth, normal salary work, Normally two most recent is perfect. If you've only just started your job and you haven't got any pay slips, that's also okay. Just get a copy of your contract mm -hmm. um, that obviously outlines what your pay rate is, what your everything is, you know, if you've got probation, all those other things. And we can use that in our info session. It's really good, which we did cover this in our finance episode, so way back into episode one. Way you're back. Um, but you kind of want to have more or less a basic under knowledge, uh, understanding on what debts you have and how much savings you've got in the bank. Yeah, exactly. So look, if you don't have it, it's okay. But if the more you're prepared, the easier it would just be and the quicker our, our catch up will be rather than being a bit longer trying to chase all that information, especially some some loan providers are absolute fucking pricks to try and get information out of. So if you can, before you catch up with us or when you do, if you've got a piece of paper, just note down with what you roughly Pay. owe, like what you roughly owe on those loans, what your repayments on who it's with, that's a really good starting point. We can always just check your fucking bank account and you can mm. just tell me how much you've got saved if you do. If you don't, still, it's fine. Good. We'll just work it all out. Yep. Um, so then you, the client walks through the door yep. and we have a uh, info pack that we've got and we've got yeah. a couple of forms in there. I'll read them out, but for the brokers and consultants listening, we're not going to explain exactly what they are. You'll have to book an appointment with us. <laughs> book an appointment or do it yourself. Do it yourself. Um, that sounds so petty. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have a capability statement, which yes. explains our story, our journey and what we do, how we do it. Yeah. The, the, what the whole pros of like about building is and mm -hmm. what it's like with, with Mr. Enthusiast, a couple of snaps and reviews from some of our clients. Um, just a whole overview of what Mr. Enthusiast is about. Yep. Um, we have a finance health check form, which I will get into in just a second, because that's going to yep. be my next point. Cool. Um, we uh, have a finance breakdown sheet, which is provided to us by the broker. Yes. We have a land document, which shows all the estates in all the suburbs in all of WA. Yep. Or or if it's if it's for Adelaide, you get something a bit different. But again, same thing. It's just an overview of the areas that we do have the capability of doing packages in. Um, as something again for you guys to think about. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, we do house build time frame, so it's a little document that shows yeah. kind of your house build journey and how long it normally takes from sta stage 100%, to stage. Hundred percent, because obviously it's broken into two parts. So what to really expect and rough time frames for the pre-construction and the construction, what it entails. Because some people have no fucking idea. So hey, building isn't just pay the deposit and build. There's all these things to consider. So we just give that as a bit of a breakdown so they understand it all. Yep. Uh, we have our triangle document, yes. which you kind of talked about last yeah. episode, and it's something that it goes through with you. Um, and any partner companies that we work with, their documents are in there as well. 100%. So like our epoxy flooring and yeah. shit like that. So just a bit of info about the different partnerships we've had with the building inspector. We can always bring that in if mm -hmm. someone wants it up front. Just so then you've got all that information. And the biggest thing I remember with our experience was that when we left, we didn't really have much to look at. And especially, again, a lot of you guys at FIFO that, you know, end up building with us, or if you're just working at home, after you've had a catch up with me, might be for 30 minutes, an hour, whatever it is, sometimes it's a little bit too much info and you want to go back onto something. That's what this info pack is all about, is to just rejig the memory of what we've discussed and mm -hmm. some things. Sometimes you just want to fucking read through and go, fuck, you know, we might be looking at building. Oh shit, how cool is this? Blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And something to think about really. Yeah. 
And each one of these documents, um, you kind of go through with a client. Absolutely. There's obviously parts that you describe, you point out things on the page. Yeah, so, 100%. Um, each one of these documents are in there for a reason, for yeah. a purpose, so that Nick can go through the build process and everything that's entailed in a build process with you. Yes. Um, that covers your finance, health, uh, finance, land, and eventually it about yeah c- gets into designs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the second form that I called out, which is a finance health check form, That is a form that you use to go through finances because that is the number one step. We keep saying finance is always number one. So let's talk about uh, the finance health check form and prepare clients for what they will be doing in the first appointment so they're aware that this is what they'll be covering. All right. So the finance health check form is a two-page document. So one page of it, basically the very top section normally goes about your basic info, so I have it on file. So what we're talking is like, full name, address, date of birth, emails, numbers, shit like that. The second portion of that is it goes about in terms of your finances. So are you in a full-time job, casual, part-time? How long have you been in the job? Do you know roughly what you earned before tax? All those type of things. Then you have a section about the debts, which if you've done the bill of your work beforehand, you can basically go and just pre-fill all that in, whatever debts you have, roughly what you owe, what your repayments are. If they come out fortnightly or monthly, put them down as that and then who it's with. And then the last portion on that first page is about assets. So this is anything that is under your name that you do own. We're talking about cars. What And basically what I want out of that is what year is it? What is it? And roughly what it's worth. Any savings that you got, jot them down. That's basically the first page done. The second page is all about, is just a authority form so that you can sign off for a credit check. It doesn't affect your file in terms of your actual credit rating. What it does is it gets, it allows a broker to act on your behalf to pull your information out. It's called a soft inquiry. It doesn't leave a mark against your name, but it gets all the information out because banks have changed their policies a few times and they used to only check for six months. Now they're checking 18 months of history. So mm. if you've missed any payments or you had a default or anything like that, we can assess that now while we're creating your plan because you don't want to be three, six months down the track going for finance and then realizing that we missed something beforehand that we didn't do those checks. So we like to go into fucking detail about finances so that when we provide those options to you, we know exactly what you can or can't do. Yeah. So that's why we say bring your pay slips, know how much you earn and know how much you've got in savings and how much debt you've got because you will be filling out this form nine times out of 10 on the day with Nick. And it doesn't matter if it takes you five minutes, 10 minutes, 50 minutes. Doesn't matter. It is what it is, but yep. it's much easier and much more streamlined if you do know that information up front. Hundred percent. It just speeds the whole process yeah. up, so then we can discuss more things that they might that might be more of those burning questions that they might have. Exactly, which segues exactly into my next section, which is we cover all of your concerns. 100%. So the types of concerns that we've covered, um, I've got just like our top five that yeah. are most common questions um, at the moment. I should say these yes. are our most common it questions changes. at the moment. Yeah. Um, the first one's builders going under. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a scary point, especially with the building boom that's happened, and some builders not being able to take it on, and some big reputable builders across Australia that have gone under, which no one thought would have happened. It's a huge concern. So people have some concerns about: is this some? You know, no one can foretell the future, but it's what what processes have you taken into place to ensure that this doesn't happen? Yeah, you know, how stable is this builder exactly, that you're working with? Exactly. Um, we talk about timeframes, which we yes. covered in the last episode and talk about the different timeframes uh, across different builders and what our timeframes and guarantees are. Uh, we talk about the current market. Yeah, 100%. So what we're talking about in current market is obviously, yes, we have a currently a building boom, but also what's happening in the general market. So we're talking about the fact of the housing crisis we have in WA alone and Australia, the rental crisis, how low the vacancy rate is, and also the dem- and talking a bit more in general about the whole fact of how much that there is still such a high demand for building homes, because we're such a we have such a shortage of homes over the next four or five years that even what's been projected is still not enough. And just going to more detail about all these things so that people can understand that it's not a, oh, everything's high now, it's going to collapse. It's You've got to look at all the, all the factors and then make a decision from there. Mm, and the last point I've got here is the price increases. People yes. are so scared of price Fuck increases. Oath. It's You never used to hear this shit until the boom happened and all the trades were smashing prices and suppliers. So it's a very big concern and we like to explain how it could potentially happen with builders, 
how we avoid that by what we do. And and just to reassure clients about how the more info you have about understanding it, then you'll be a, a lot more aware whether it's with us or with another builder that if they're not taking some of these steps that you might be inclined for those things. Mm-hmm. And just a full overview of the whole scenario. Yeah. Um, we also cover like the benefits of building versus buying an established home. Yes, yeah. Um, and we go into a lot more depth during the first. Yeah, it's more about like the pros and cons of each. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, can I just buy it? Well, it's a little bit different with finances and expectations versus building as well. So that's just an overview of it. But we do go into more detail. And again, these are just the general ones. Some clients come with a whole fucking list of questions. Some people don't have any. We try and just give as much information, but at the same time, I don't want to blow someone's brain out with too much info. No. Because you're going to walk away confused. So we do a little bit at a time, and if you've got any questions, you always come back to me as well. Yeah, and you you kind of keep track. Some clients just go kind of like go glazy yeah, eyed over you, and you're like, oh, okay, oh, too fuck. many. Where did I lose you? I bought mission, I bought mission. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when we start talking about the benefits of building versus buying and establish, it really kind of uh, – makes it easier for you to narrow down why these clients are more interested in building versus buying an established. Like why have they come to you? Because I don't I don't think anyone thinks that we do established homes. I don't no. think we've come across the market that way if we have. Sorry. Sorry, we don't. No, we don't. Yeah, <laughs> um, definitely. So like, you know, and, and why people would want to build with us versus others, etc. We're going to into town about all and the biggest thing is is that ensuring that your your needs and wants are met with mm-hmm. what buildings can with what building can provide, and, but also being aware that it is going to be a little bit more dearer than established homes, and these are the reasons why. So, I'm very fucking straight to the point about it, and making sure that we just lay it all out. And if it works, and we we talk about it quite openly with with all our clients, if it's something that you know what this might not be the right thing, that's all good. Let's just work it out the finances, then you can take it from there and make your own decisions. Yeah, exactly. Um, so knowing that we go through um, all those forms, we cover finance quite in depth. We yes. talk about concerns. We go through the land document as well. Yes. So we would have covered um, house and land in the first appointment. And yes. if we've got time, it's good when, um, before you start wrapping up an appointment, you start talking about house designs, mm-hmm. um, ideal house designs and land areas and what this client is actually seeking because it then tells you if it's realistic if it's something that you're going to be actually able to help them with. Yes. Um, yeah, so, yeah, 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 so okay, I'll yeah. help you, don't <laughs> worry. So the the whole point of it is, is when we're talking about this, by this stage one, when you fill in the document, we've spit you on about quite a few things. I'm already starting to do some like rough estimations on what's going on. I've been doing this long enough and been trained by the brokers that I've used over the years that I can look at something and go, this looks pretty potential straight off the bat or we need a bit more assistance before we can make a decision. And that's where the conversations, it, it can fluctuate with clients about the whole fact of I'll start going, going, hey, look, what is ideally, what is it that you might want? Have you got any thought into it? And some people go, I really want these type of areas. I want a double story. I want this and this. And that's something that I can immediately start going into and go, look, we can't do double story or we can't do these regional areas or we can't do certain things because of XXXX. So then we're really establishing that that expectation and the honesty and transparency up front with the client. So then that they can actually start going, okay, cool, maybe that isn't the right thing for us right now, but we can look at doing X and X. Mm-hmm. And those are the things that we're going into with the info session without going too far into here's a design, here's a package, this and that, because we're still trying to establish the finances and everything to a T. I'll never sit there and go do everything straight away because I always get that double checked with our finance broker yeah, first. Absolutely. Get him to do all the different, um, you know, to basically suss it all out with the different banks. With the, So then we know what the different deposits are and the budgets and those repayments exactly to what the current market is mm-hmm. with the banks. Then we can go through in further detail about everything from there because then they've established the timeframes and the budgets. Now we can look at the packages. Yeah, exactly. And we don't want to be making empty promises. Fuck we no. don't want to be misleading any clients. No. So it is all about giving you as much information uh, relevant to you as a client. Um, so each first appointment will be different because it depends where the conversations sway. It depends how well you vibe. Yeah. Um, depends how well you guys, uh, like your values align and how well, you guys connect as human yeah, to human. This is this is actually going to be quite a bit of a shocker for a few people is as much as clients go out shopping, looking at different builders and brokers and, and fucking consultants, 
I also choose my clients. Mm. And the reason why I do this is because sometimes I can't, I know I can't help everyone. And I want to ensure that the clients that we work with understand the processes and the extra effort we go in with our clients and what we do. And that there's a mutual respect between the two of us, because if the client rocks up to, to the office and sits there and tries and gives off the vibe that, Hey, you work for me, I'm paying you for your shit. I'll be walking that fucker out the door as quickly as I came in. Whereas someone that is understanding what we do and we have a good night, we start spit yelling, we're laughing and we're actually going through and there is a mutual respect between the two. That's someone that will be more inclined to want to work together with because you're not just going to deal with me for the finances and to build a home. You're stuck with me for a long fucking time. So let's say you build this 12 months. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to be touching base with you for another 12 months after that. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's so <laughs> you are stuck with me. So mm -hmm. you got to make, you got to remember. So I do also want to make sure that the time that we're, we're spending with, with these clients, it's going to, you know, it's going to be worth for everyone and that everyone's going to appreciate it. Cause otherwise it's, it's like a relate. It's like building a relationship. Oh, bit. Fucking look, that's just how, that's how I've done this whole business. And I, f I won't <laughs> give it back for anything. Next dating other people. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, Julia. <laughs> It, I got the ring. No, bugger <laughs> off. <laughs> so that's what it's all about, really. It's uh, I, I like to build a, a relationship, so to speak, with every one of our clients because everyone's journey is different. Mm -hmm. And and the fact that they're willing to come and to reach out for us to try and help them out, I want to do everything I fucking can for them. So that's why we, we go through it all. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, that's, that's also okay. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, it, the clients for us, they're not a job number. They're not no. just another number. They are by name. I know a client's name before I know what house design they have picked. Yeah. That is, at least that's from my side. You know their face before you know anything else. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah do. But it's the same thing. It's we value our clients. Our clients is our number one fucking priority. Mm -hmm. I've burnt bridges with some of the big builders over the years because of my clients, because I, that's all I care about. Exactly. It is the clients that provide that are paying for the home. It's the clients that are valuing what we do. We work alongside the builders because the builder is an almost like an extension of the arm of what we do. Mm -hmm. They are basically doing a lot of the headaches I don't want to do, organizing trades and building the home and yeah, stuff no, like that. that. Fuck that. You can't pay me enough for that shit. But that's why I treat everything the same. So if the builder fucks someone over, it's not even for me fucking someone over. So I want to make sure that everyone can work together and that the builder's focus is all about the client. Same as how it is always about us mm -hmm. and it, our, our expectation, our focus is always the client. So once all three marry up, that's when we know we've got a good team behind us and support and we're going to get fucking shit done. Yeah, exactly. We did go off on a little bit of a tangent Whoops. there. Um, but just to summarize in your first appointment, you will, uh, the first appointment is all about creating a plan and getting to know you. Definitely. You receive an information pack from us that has a bundle of forms in there. Yes. Um, that is for you to take home. 100%. And Nick will go through each form with you so you can always reflect back on that at home. Uh, we cover your finances quite in depth. Yes. Which you will go through with the broker again anyway, but it's us gathering the information for the broker and just yes. to assess where you are. 100%. Um, we cover all your concerns, any questions, concerns. We cover all of that in the first appointment. Yep. Um, and we cover why people choose to build versus choose to go to established. Yeah. Um, uh, plus so much other stuff as well. Plus but, some. Um, that's more or less what you would receive in a first appointment. Yeah, it's it's all about, like we were saying, it's all about getting that plan. It's basically so then you've got the information that what to do, how to do it and the time frame to achieve it. That's all this is about. After that, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If not, no qualms. Like it's it's all good. And it's obligation free. Yeah. Well, and yeah, it's fine. free of charge. That's it's, the main yeah, one. Obligation free, free of charge. Just reach out. You're not you're not wasting my time. If you can walk away with more information than what you started, then I've done my fucking job. Exactly. That's all it's about. Exactly. So um, we'll keep it a, as a short episode this time. I think- uh, You're welcome, guys. Considering last episode was such a long one. <laughs> uh, plug, plug, plug. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Google- uh, website, website. YouTube. YouTube. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcast or Spotify, you can also find us on- Apple. Uh, Apple Podcast oh, and Spotify. <laughs> 
Um, and TikTok. So literally, oh, yeah, and TikTok. literally any any social media platform that's out there, except for like Twitter and shit, I don't deal with that crap. And that is Mr. Enthusiast, uh, not yes. the Enthusiast Lab. No, no, Mr. Enthusiast for all the socials, and then on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts, the, Enthu- Enthusi- the Enthusiast Lab. The Enthusiast Lab. <laughs> Um, we got there, guys. We got there. <laughs> We're a bit fried. Um, <laughs> and just remember, guys, we're not here. To fuck spiders. Bye. Bye.